friends, I have a question for you. Have you ever wanted to go to a government convention on the latest and greatest in technology? Maybe check out some shiny new AI tools being hawked to the highest investors? Or maybe you just like the tea when it all gets a little messy. Defitic 2025 gave us all of that and more. To keep from baiting anyone, that title isn't hyperbolic. Defitic is a glimpse at some of the biggest investors in the AI space, the US government. It is the largest IT conference the military puts on. This con and Gartner have become my meter sticks for the industry as a whole. They tend to reflect where the money is going and upcoming industry trends as set by some of the biggest names out there. And honestly, the last year has me thinking that 2026 might have us dealing with some turbulence in the AI industry. I have been really particular about not giving in to the, oh no, the AI bubble is coming kind of hype and doom train that's been going on for like the last year, year and a half. But this is the first time I've seen actual evidence through repeated patterns that the industry has lost some of its shine. So even though I've only been going to this conference for the last three cycles, we've got some important topics to cover today. That'll include talking about how the physical landscape has changed, the answers to the biggest questions we ask developers every year, and what that all might mean for the AI industry for next year. Getting right into it, this year's theme might be lethality, readiness, and efficiency, but it should really be less is more, trust me bro. We saw a lot less everything. Uh, less vendors taking up the same space by sizing up their booths. Less people, but more standing room and open spaces to congregate. We saw less fancy booth displays overall. I mean, hell, even the dude with the popcorn machine downsized. We also saw less vendors that represented government organization. There's less AI-focused vendors overall, and the robotic side of this is missing entirely. Look at this. They massacred my boy. May his googly eyes be resting in peace in whatever damn storage container he's been shoved into. Okay, okay. Uh, back on track. What I'm saying is, it didn't matter where you were at, and almost didn't matter what you were doing. This year felt sparse. And there was good reason for that. Tons of military travel budgets have been cut and slashed, but that was felt so hard that rumors started that Defitic might not even happen this year. This all caused some vendors to pull out and others to only prepare to have the bare minimum. Let's get a few hard numbers into the mix. This year, Defitic saw roughly 3,700 attendants. That's counting on the high end according to current numbers that we've been receiving. That's way down from 5,200 last year. Some of the representatives for the local area said that hotels were still fully booked, but that there was a lot of work put in to even make the event occur this year. So props to them for ensuring that this could go on. See, Defitic before it was ever Defitic was always branded as an IT conference and expo, and I'm going to continue to refer to it that way for the rest of this video to prevent any kind of confusion. Words are hard, man. Okay, we're, we're gonna get through this today, I swear. <laughs> the city and the Air Force had to relabel Defitic as a training and education event this year to fall in line with the new travel compliance requirements. But to be clear, nothing has changed at Defitic. I mean, scaled down, yes, but it is the same conference, just with a new and fancy tagline. And I mean, do I even have to mention this sign? Because man, boots on the ground were upsetto spaghetto about this one. This was the theme of the convention. Change, reduction, and an overall focus on ROI. Everything that was there from the year prior was there, but things felt toned down while somehow being way more tense thanks to these kind of warnings. Outside of the general landscape, I have a set of questions that I regularly burden every AI-focused vendor with at Defitic. I recognize and fully admit to vendors that these questions are unfair, so before anybody comes at me saying how rude it was to offer them near trap questions with almost no way to answer correctly, yes, that is the point and everyone fully understood that before speaking with me. When a developer looks me in the eyes and says, we don't have a good definition for AI agents with their whole f***ing chest, I just, I, I wanna scream, I gotta be real with you. 
And if every vendor said that, I'd say we have a giant knowledge gap in the industry. So these questions, at the end of the day, they're only to see where organizations are at, never to make fun of them or to call out individuals. And to be blunt, even though these people are representing the folks that they work for, we don't want to pin anything as a company statement, with the exception of a few positive spotlights. Here's how it went this year. Question one is pure lead up. Is your model proprietary that runs your service, and is it a micro model or an LLM? The answer from vendors is always super straightforward. Uh, they almost always rely on outside providers for LLMs, roughly at an 80-20 split. This split hasn't really moved much in the last couple years, it's just that the overall vendors with an AI focus has declined. Okay, now for the gut punch. Vendors are then asked to expand on the last question. How can you guarantee quality of service with the real potential for model declination? Everyone f***ing sucks on this one, except for a handful of organizations that I managed to tap on it while at this conference. But let's cover the majority first. A few years ago, no one had an answer to this question, and many didn't even know what model declination or collapse was. That was brushed off as sending individuals out who are more about marketing and less about the development side. The nice update to that is that last year, we saw a lot more developers coming out to Defitic, and when asked, they had much the same problem. In fact, we even found during this time span that some vendors would flat out lie, claiming their non-proprietary systems couldn't suffer from that. Or better yet, claiming that their upstream supplier had magically fixed the issue only to speak with that supplier and find out that they had not done any such thing. Luckily, this year was different, but uh, I say luckily, I'm not really sure if it's a good thing or not. Every vendor that used an outside provider had an answer that was almost universal across the board. When they were asked, how do you guarantee quality of service through model declination, they said, that isn't our problem. I literally got told to go talk to Google and IBM if I wanted an answer by many organizations because they just did not feel responsible for their own quality of service. And a lot of these folks weren't even using IBM or Google to begin with. I <coughs> hated that and I still do. The amount of people that had no issue brushing this off was honestly astonishing. And I'll say it with my whole chest, knowing damn well some of these folks might come across this video. It is so weird to see organizations saying that they'll sell it, it's quality, but then openly admit that they can't do anything to promise that bar of quality down the road. It's even weirder that they don't feel any responsibility if that bar flies into the dirt. There is nothing about those statements that offers confidence or assurance in your company or product come the f on. I know it's harsh, but seriously, these organizations can do better. And we know that because of outliers like IBM. Their model, Granite, has never had an appeal to the public, only enterprise. Their solution is simple and came about sometime last year. The data they use to train is primarily internal data, meaning they know and understand the quality far deeper than a system scraping every corner of the internet. But they've also got a red and a green flag system that looks out for drops in performance or quality statistics. And if things drift too far, models are rolled back. Transparency is the name of the game here, and IBM overall seems like they're doing some good work with this particular aspect of AI right now. Google's Gemini team was posed the same question, but we got the classic, we'll get back to you. Of course, if you don't own a model or aren't working with IBM or a company that has these safeguards, it is essentially impossible to pull this off. So some organizations with proprietary tech like Palo Alto over here, they were able to answer in the same manner as IBM at least. They control the model and the levers, so declination, when measured, is as easy as rolling things back. And if you're over there wondering, Ellie, why doesn't every company just do that? Uh, the answer is money. You know, the, the classic thing. It's just money. Nothing complex really going on here. We'll do a video later about Moore's Law and the ideas of RLHF having an overall benefit, even when it has an initial negative impact. 
For now though, let's keep on track with Daphitic because y'all are about to get me spun up on an entirely different rant. At this point, what we're seeing is an honest to goodness slowing down of AI investment. The field is bloated and disjointed. Everybody is fighting for their own goals and the honeymoon phase we heard a retired three star mention might just be dwindling. It didn't feel like there was money floating all around this year, and I don't know if I see that as a bad thing. These conferences are a chance for us to pause and take a quick sanity check on where the industry is and where it was just a few years ago. And a few years ago, the AI industry as a whole was far more in love with projects that aim to help people. That's why I fell in love with the overall potential, and obviously that's fallen to the wayside to help organizations since those tend to have cash far more than people who need help. We no longer see things presented at these conferences that could be an overall net benefit to humanity. It isn't early medical diagnosis and fire detection systems. Everybody is focused on the latest and greatest in LLMs, but simultaneously forgot that with the new and shiny hammer, not everything is a nail. And the big egos, even outside of the political spectrum, they aren't helping. The amount of infighting that many of the organizations suffer from, the amount of pettiness between vendors depending on who you work for, hell, I've seen government organizations go for the throat of another despite both having secure contracts. Defitic, for some, is a way to see the fruits of their labor as they attempt to collect influence and organizational control like Pokemon cards. That is a horrible place for us to end this video though, so let's go with some mildly delusional affirmations for the future and remember the silver linings we saw in IBM and Palo Alto. I hope that this sort of LLM fatigue is catching up with the powers that be, investors, and enterprise. With the fallout being that we see some more realistic focus on micro models instead of trying to shove every LLM into a solution. I hope that if this is a sign of fatigue within the industry, then we'll see some folks pivot back to those humanity-driven tools. I mean, that's a pipe dream, but hey, a goblin can dream of pipes, okay? I think more than anything, I just want that to happen without indie developers suffering from some kind of bubble bursting. On that note, I think it's time for me to get out of here, folks. If you've heard me yap about the Gartner conference last year, then I'ma spoil the fun. Uh, that conference is out of my reach this year, but I swear one day I will be back into a Disney park to listen to drunk adults terrorize teenage ride operators. I got a last minute invitation to Daphitic from the same lovely folks who have sponsored my ticket the last few years. Unfortunately, that doesn't extend to a Gartner invite since I don't work for the same people anymore, but hopefully we'll be back in there for 2026. Until next video, see ya nerds.